Now we come to another marvelous prayer of David in Psalm 143 here. And here you have an urgent appeal of this man for help. And this is a very wonderful, oh, this is a marvelous psalm. And you see David again, no inhibitions, just opens up his heart to God. Oh, that we'd learn to pray like that. He says, hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me and in thy righteousness. Now, this is the kind of prayer that David's praying and he appeals to the faithfulness and righteousness of God for an answer. And isn't that exactly what John told us to do today? That is, Christians, what are you to do about your sins? First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Here we have the faithfulness of God and just, and that's righteous. Here you have the righteousness of God. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what he did for David. This is a psalm that just lays bare this man's experience. And this is a very wonderful psalm. It's a great prayer. <laughs> and it's one that can fit into your experience and my experience today. And it's a prayer that we can rest upon the faithfulness of God and the righteousness of God to forgive our sins. And they rested upon that. In Micah 7, 20, we're told, Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Now, if you believe God is through with the nation Israel, why, read a verse like that. And then Exodus 2, 24 and 25, God heard their groaning. God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob, and God looked upon the children of Israel. God had respect unto them. Why? Because he's faithful and he's righteous. And Paul says this in Romans 10, 3, "...for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness," have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, he's talking about this nation. That's their problem today. And friends, that's the problem of the Gentile today, trying to work at a religion, trying to do something to please God. He's already done something for you, and you please him when you accept what he has done. For Paul continues in Romans 10, 3 to say, "...for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness." to everyone that believeth. And then he cries out in this prayer here. Listen to him. He says, Answer me speedily. Jehovah, my spirit faileth. This is verse 7 here. And hide not thy face from me, or I shall be like them that go down to the pit. In other words, he's saying, You're my only help. And he said in verse 6, and I should have read that, I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee like a thirsty land. I've watched it rain out on the desert in that sandy soil. And my, that rains and rains and rains, and it doesn't run off. That thirsty land's drinking it up. And finally, when it's filled up, that's when you have a flash flood. What a picture that we have here, friends, in this marvelous 143rd Psalm.